got him that time. Now, 10 incher. <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. I mean, that honestly, if you were reading a magazine or listening to some pro, that's about as classic a looking spot as you're going to find. Rip rap coming into some emergent water willow by a bridge. I mean, they're probably having tons of tournaments right here, letting them go. I mean, you pretty much can't draw, draw one up better than that. He bit it three times. I really love to fish swim jigs, and I have for a long time. They're, they're a very realistic, easy to fish bait. Um, you don't have to overthink it for a lot of ways to fish it. You basically can pull up to a variety of cover, be it emergent vegetation, submergent vegetation, docks, rocks, uh, trees, brush, anything that's gonna hold, hold fish and swim this bait back and generate and trigger a reaction strike a lot of time. You got that one. And you can fish those types of swim jigs in a lot of places where you can't throw a spinner bait or say a chatter bait because the blades will hang up in the grass and it's just not going to be as effective as some of those. So it gives you a different look, a different presentation while you're running down a lot of different banks to, to trigger a reaction from a bass. We're actually in Shoal Creek. It's a great public boat ramp here on, on Wilson Lake right outside of Florence, Alabama. Uh, I like fishing Wilson. It's probably been four or five years since I've had a chance to come up here and fish, but I've been on the lake a couple times since then because we filmed that Boat US Collegiate Bass Fishing Championship up here. And this is always a fun lake. You catch a lot of fish. And we've got overcast skies right now, a little bit of rain and water temperatures actually 78. I noticed when I touched those fish, they were hot. I didn't think it'd be that hot and we might still have a shad spawn, so I came up here to throw swim uh, jigs and spinner baits and flip some of this uh, water willow, this emergent vegetation that Wilson is known for. And we had half a dozen bites, caught two or three right there at the boat ramp. Now we're gonna idle up here a little bit further and see what the day holds for us. Really, you know, I'm just gonna fish what's in front of us and have some fun. Oh, fish what's in front of you. Sometimes that's all you gotta do. And I mean, honestly, there's no telling how many fish are released right here from, from different tournaments that they have. And it just looks right as a place to go fling one for a little bit. And see if we can't catch one. We, that fish right there, I never even felt him bite. He, he probably hit it from behind and took off. I just saw my line kind of shoot in the other direction. And, we had him. I've thrown swim jigs a lot of different places. Lake Texoma shad spawns. I've fished uh, great times on Choke Canyon, fishing around the holes in the grass. Uh, Lake Wilson, fishing emergent water willow type cover. And regardless of where I have thrown swim jigs, I've just had a lot of fun doing it. It's, it's a way that it's, it's mindless fishing, for lack of a better word. You can drop your trolling motor when you see cover and start at one end and fish to the other. And you just throw it in the holes, you throw it on the edges, you throw it where there's a lay down at in the middle of it, you throw it in the brush, you skip it under a dock. You don't have to overthink it. Uh, and, and really, it's, it's the old school visual type of fishing on the bank that we all love and enjoy because when you get a bite, it's generally an aggressive reaction bite that allows you to set the hook, turn the handle, laugh about it, drop it back in the water, and go do the same thing as you fish down the bank. And that, to me, is one of the best things about bass fishing. Drop the trolling motor, cover water, chunk and wipe. Boy, that was a non-aggressive bite for a swim jig. He just kind of came up and probably just fell off. Come back here. I mean, that was, I could have the wrong color. I don't know, these fish are, I'm getting bites, small ones. But like that fish there, he's been caught before. I didn't do that. He just kind of came up and, you know, mouthed it. I more jerked him out of the water than I did anything. Coming up after the break, Wade tries to solve the mystery of the short strike and light bites out on Wilson Lake. Could a small mistake, such as not packing enough of a specific trailer, be the solution to this problem? Stay tuned to find out.
miles of water in front of you and hundreds of feet below. You need a boat with the chops to dominate, no matter the conditions. With the strength and technology to overcome the elements and the competition. Ranger Boats, still building legends, one at a time. You have a full-time job and you want to be a full-time angler. Don't waste time scouting. You want to catch fish. That's where Garmin comes in. Our mapping with Navionics data lets you see more detail than the fish do. It's kind of a big deal. Oh, and our industry-leading live sonar is so crisp and clear you'll think you jumped in. You're welcome. Now if only we had a powerful, efficient, whisper-quiet trolling motor. Actually, we do. It's called Force. We knew you'd like that. Less time finding, more time catching fish. Only with Garmin. <laughs> you know, I think as fishermen, we question everything all the time, and color is one of the key ones. You know, I've, I've developed kind of over the last few years that I, I try to stay within my comfort zones, the green pumpkins and the white, you know, things that look like a bluegill, things that look like a shad, things that look like a crawfish, depending on the bait that I'm using. And right now, I'm, I'm, I would have thought and you never know till you launch your boat, that there have been a shad spawn going on, but the water temperature is really warm, so I'm not seeing shad, but I am seeing some fry. I'm not sure what kind of fry that is, but these fish are not aggressively taking the bait. I'm not feeling the bite. I'm seeing the bite more than anything. And, you know, I'm having a lot of fish when I get up here to the boat just kind of falling off. So they definitely like to swim jig. They definitely want to eat it, but I'm, I'm not convinced I'm throwing the right color. I'm just kind of getting a reaction bite right now. You know, I may have, the tail may be too bright on this. I may need to make everything a little more subtle. Those are the things as a fisherman, if you can figure that out, that really pays a big dividend. My choice of trailers that was on the bait that I first picked up was this larger kamikaze um, swim on right here. And that swim on is one of my favorite spinner bait, chatter bait, swim jig type trailers. It's got a great action. It really pulses great when you're working the skirt, uh, holds up really well to lots of strikes. You don't go through a lot of them. And it comes in a lot of different uh, particular colors. This color right here to me is, is really shows up in the water. But what I noticed right away, literally sitting at the boat ramp, uh, throwing, throwing my swim jig out there before we ever even took off. I'd missed, I don't know, I think I missed four fish and caught two before we ever even take, took off from the beginning of the deal. Most of those were small fish, but what I was, I was seeing is those fish were coming out and they were grabbing onto that tail and I was missing them. I pretty hard headed and I threw that for a long time and eventually though I lost that particular trailer and when I started digging around in the box, I couldn't find that I had any more of that trailer. Tie that kamikaze crawl on, that'll work. What I ended up doing was grabbing the kamikaze crawl, which is a lot more compact bait. It has some big claws on here with some uh, holes in it that's designed to create some bubbles. And you can see the difference in the size just by looking at the two that I was using right here. And I went from a much bigger, bulkier bait that I was missing a lot of fish to a much more compact bait and I started catching a lot of them. That'll work, look at that. That actually might work better. One of the things that I felt, and I can't prove it, the water's really clear. And I had a very chartreuse set of legs on my kamikaze swim on. It was very bright. It was generating a lot of strikes, so we'll see if it doesn't, but this is a little more subtle. I kind of felt like a lot of the bites I was getting those fish were just kind of getting it up and turning it down and kind of mouthing it. And I feel like they should have been a lot more aggressive. Look at that. <laughs> Three casts. I'm not going to say we had a clue what we were saying or doing, but that bit bit pretty good and he thumped it pretty hard. So that's pretty fun. Not a big one, but a bite. Swimming a swim jig is something that to me, there's guys that are obviously artists at it and they've really got a lot of confidence in certain things because they, they push that. There are guys that are good with spinner baits, guys that are good with chatter baits. And to me, these baits kind of fall in a similar category of tie it on a, on a rod with 
no less than 17 pound test. And honestly, I'd never tie it on less than 20 in most cases, all the way up to 40 to 60 pound braid. You're gonna fish these on six foot nine medium heaven, heavy to seven foot four, probably heavy action rods. You're gonna be target oriented for the most part. You're gonna get that bait by that cover and you're gonna work it back with lots of pulsating flares to the, to the rod tip. You're basically shaking that rod a lot of times to get that skirt to flare and fluff out there and get that bait to have some darting action. And whether I'm, I'm fishing it in the emergent vegetation of Lake Wilson or other places like that, it's a bait that, and it's a reaction bait. And by nature, mixing up those sizes, mixing up the colors, mixing up the retrieve, you, know, you may throw a spinner bait by and not get a bite. And you go two feet down, you grab the, the swim bait and you throw it in there and bam, you get a bite. It's just something that uh, when you get it in your hands can help generate a lot of strikes. <laughs> There we go. They're on the trees, huh? It's funny, I just asked Cody, so where are the big ones? I set the hook, he says they're on the trees. But if he'd have said that beforehand, we'd have gave him credit for his comment, but instead he said it afterwards. That's a little bit better there. Reliability. Yamaha is known for it, and it's something boaters value, because these days, few things are built to last. When we find something that is, we hold on to friendships, traditions, outboards, because every second on the water is sacred. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters choose Yamaha for the long run, for life, because reliability starts here. We don't have a large laboratory to test baits. Why, you ask? We don't need a big laboratory because our pros fish, our employees fish, our owners fish, and our kids fish. This is our laboratory. Our R&D comes from time on the water. All that time on the water brings us thousands of hours of testing new products and improving current ones for all species. Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Yesterday we came out in the morning, had a great time just fishing Lake Wilson, spent some time talking with Cody and Gentry and just, you know, running around the lake. What we discovered was there was a decent swim jig bite going on that morning and I decided this afternoon I've got some time to go back out and we're going to focus and talk more about specifically swim jig fishing why you do it, when you do it, where you do it, trailers that might work, some of the you know, situations we found successes and failures with in the past and, and why we think we may have failed and why we do certain things. And as we run around, we may get a bite, we may get 10 bites, we may get 20 bites. You don't ever know till you go fishing, but we're really gonna push some of our past experiences and knowledge on swim jig fishing. Right out on that windy point, you know, really should, if you think about it, that's probably the best place for that. Oh gosh, lost him right there, dead gummit. That's really where that fish should have been. I mean, he was right there on the point of that grass where the wind's kind of blowing in, sets up great for an ambush point. He, that fish just absolutely smoked it, about a pound and a half fish. I had it on good, good hook set, good in there, and he got down in all that grass and they can just tear that hook out when they do that but you know if you were lining up a place that makes sense to throw a swim jig honestly that's about as good a angle as you could expect when it comes to swim jig fishing there's there's not a whole lot of secrets to it really it's more about committing to it and keeping it in the water and, and just basically reeling it, shaking it, and pausing it. Now there's certain variables to every day when you're out swim jig fishing based on the color, the trailer, and things along those lines that are obviously gonna help you generate more strikes. But a swim jig, by its very nature and by its design, is a bait 
You can throw out, throw it past the target, throw it past the cover, and start a steady pumping type retrieve where you're kind of working that rod up and down and parting the action a lot of times with the, the kind of the pauses and the shakes of your rod. And as that bait gets near the cover, you're either gonna bang it off the cover, you're gonna pause it by it, or you're just gonna keep reeling it right on by in hopes of generating a reaction strike. And a lot of those strikes, I feel, kind of come on that pause while you're dropping that rod tip, letting it kind of come out of that steady retrieve that's been going on, and those fish just come up and inhale them. Yeah. That one there was deeper into the hole. Same about similar size to what we caught yesterday, but still fun. Go back and grow up. You know, that one came out of that hole, and when we stopped here yesterday, I missed several fish uh, coming through here, and I actually, well, we're bouncing around. I actually decided to come back over here because the other side of the lake, which is calmer, everybody's over there fishing. Every pocket's got two and three boats, and I thought, man, I'll go over here and kind of plink down this windy side and hopefully find some of these holes that aren't as windy and see if we can't catch some because we weren't even hardly able to fish for all the boat traffic over there and here we're dealing with all the all the wind <laughs> so but i'll take it we captured one Old chunky thing isn't he out there he's got some, some shoulders on him let him go you know, that's the, that's the kind of bite you like to see right there. It's hard to capture all this, but you can see I'm at the end of the grass right here. A little, little bit lighter weight one right here, quarter ounce. I mean, this water is only two to three feet deep that we're fishing. Out here on the edges, I probably could throw that half, but swimming through this, through the top, and I'm dropping it, letting it fall, twitching it, letting it drop, letting it fall. And, you know, on the fall, a lot of these bites are coming in those holes as I run it into that grass and that one there just smoked it. I mean, he'd already swam probably four or five feet before I was able to pick up and catch up with him and got lucky that it didn't rip out of his mouth that time because a lot of times when those fish get their head turned down and they get to go in that direction, you're in a bind. That was a classic drop the rod, swim jig, bite. Following this quick break, we continue to talk swim jig fishing and take a closer look at the MVP swim jig from Secret Lures. Keep it tuned here for more. Attention anglers, are you looking for soft tubes or craws? How about big jigs, little jigs, and shaky heads of all sorts and sizes? Do you want some sweet swim jigs that you can take all across the country? When's the last time you stocked up on frogs, wacky rigs, or big old lead shakers? Maybe you just need a few swim bait heads, finesse jigs, and some good old stupid tube jig heads. You'll find all that and more fishing gear when you go online and shop the entire selection of Secret Lures now. why a swim jig is so effective. You can see that brush right there. I just reeled it through that four trees. There are little forks in the tree right there. And bam, I mean, he just come up and smashed it right away. You know, that's, a, that's a good aggressive bite. There's been a lot of boats come through here a lot of times with spinner baits, and it's just a different look. That's all that it provides. It just provides a different look to everything you're doing. When Secret Lures, you know, they set out to produce, the, in their opinion, the ultimate swim jig, and they realized that different styles were best suited for different parts of the country. And I've talked about that several times in the past. The northern version is, is basically a quarter ounce uh, swim jig with a 5 op medium gauge mustad hook. It's perfect 
for a lot of those longer casts, I feel like, and with light line, say 17 pound test uh, fluorocarbon. Now, I would never go less than 17 pounds uh, personally when you're fishing those clear waters. The southern version is a 3 8 ounce with a 4 aught heavy gauge hook by Mustad. And I feel like that's best suited for your grassy and stain fisheries or where you're going to be using braided line because it's going to help you know really hold up when the, some of those bigger hook sets. In addition to that, they've got a half ounce one that features a 5 aught saltwater hook and it's specifically built for braided lines and that's going to allow you really to jerk them out of that heavy cover and not have to worry about any of those types of situations. All their heads offer lifelike 3D eyes, flare gills, a recessed line tie which I think is really important to allow for a sleek weedless profile. They also are very well balanced, have a gliding action that's been really perfected for each of the weights and the skirt can be you know customized to the application that you're going to be going to be looking to use them which really pays off for a lot of the people that are going to be you know looking at different types of, of bluegill colors specifically because there's so many different colors of panfish across the nation that you're going to want to match your trailer and specifically the skirt of your swim jig too. I mean, if you're looking for a tree to reel a bait to, that's about as good a one as you're going to find. Sometimes, you know, like there was a lot of grass on this side of it, sometimes you got to make multiple casts to a target like this to find where that fish is setting to get him to bite. Sometimes you can just reel it through there one time and get that bite. So you just kind of got to let the fish tell you what they want, either the front, back, side, middle, or are they even there? Looks like he's not even there. God, what a strike. God, the fish jumped all the way out of the water. That is swim jig fishing right there. Golly, like I was talking about, I made five casts to that tree, made one to that one, and he just sharked out of the water for it. That is so cool. What a bite. What about big old chunky fish right there? This is such a fun technique to generate bites in so many different manners. And when you get a day that you think the fish are really aggressive, the old swim jig it really can pay off in a lot of good bites and some giants as well. That'll conclude this episode of the Bass Pro Shops Fisherman's Handbook. The next time you take to the water, be sure to try a swim jig around heavy cover and get ready to set the hook. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This has been a Caraco TV production. This episode was made possible by these partners. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament yes, bass fishing, sir. from household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. From sun up to sun down, day in and day out, we work hard. We play hard. And to keep us going during those long hours, we demand performance. Engel Coolers, the original high performance cooler. Marine Pro from the makers of Seafoam Motor Treatment. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment for all types of marine engines. Just pour it in. Marine Pro works to clean and lubricate your entire fuel system, helps engines start easier and run smoother, stabilizes fuel, and helps prevent costly boat engine problems. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy.
Ask for Marine Pro wherever marine products are sold. TH Marine has been producing top-of-the-line marine accessories to rig boats from transom to trolling motor for decades. From jack plates to fish care to LEDs, TH Marine has you covered. TH Marine, outfitting your boat from transom to trolling motor.